Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 537. Tonight, we've got a jam-packed, exciting show for you. We've got a big announcement about uh, an early edition of Linux that is coming back from the grave. Also, we are going to be showing you how to create and operate the poor man's mic kit for your video camera. You're going to be able to do that for less than the cost of a latte. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Got my buddies with me. That's right. Sasha. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. The loss of an expensive Russian satellite was due to an error in the coordinates that were programmed into it at launch. Apple has apologized after facing criticism for admitting it deliberately slows down aging iPhone models. Google has developed a human-like text-to-speech AI. And as it turns out, the Nigerian prince is actually a 67-year-old man from Louisiana. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSD. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Cat5.tv slash IAIB. It's nice to have you here, and as you know, if you've been following the show over the past couple of weeks, um, each and every week for four weeks consecutively, we are trying four different 4K cameras valued at under $2,000 each. So, what? last week, we were looking at the Panasonic HCWX F991. The week before that was the Sony AX53. So, if you want to tune into episodes number uh, 535 and 536, you'll get to see those two cameras this week. The camera that we're using is called the Sony FDR-AX100. So this is a little on the higher end as far as prosu like consumer into prosumer. Okay. I would say this is really into the prosumer line. The AX53 from Sony is more of the consumer end of the 4K. Mm -hmm. And then the AX100 uh, brings us into the prosumer, which is borderline between professional and consumer. So the price point is still, uh, uh, is still really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to give us um, some pretty good quality. So why are we doing this? Well, first of all, if you are interested in starting your own webcast, or maybe you've got um, church services that you want to stream every Sunday or anything else, maybe business meetings and things that you really want to be able to do broadcasts with, well, what we're doing is we're checking out 4K cameras to see what one you would prefer to take a look at. Mm -hmm. All of these cameras are provisioned by B&H Photo Video, and of course, they are one of our partners. You can check them out at cat5.tv slash bh. And by checking out their website, now they probably have, uh, I would say, the best pricing. So mm -hmm. do some comparative shopping. Make sure you do, go to cat5.tv slash bh, and uh, they are American based but they do ship to Canada obviously we're here broadcasting from Canada and their right. shipping to Canada is exceptional so if you're in Canada or outside of the US in any way um, check with them if if they ship to you because their shipping is is superb um, they take care of the the import taxes for us and it, it comes that, in and it's just delivered like anything oh, else. That's perfect. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, uh, great company to work with and the products are, are superb. So, uh, why are we looking at 4K when our show is only 1080p? I know the answer to this. Do you have a guess? It's for digital zoom, right? Yes. Yes. Because when you have a 4K <laughs> video coming into the computer through our Magewell capture card. Um, so you do need to have a capture card that's pretty high end. This is the XI100DE-HDMI-4K. Say that five times real that's, fast. I can't even say it once <laughs> fast. <laughs> it, it, I have to look down. Uh, but it's the 4K Magewell capture card. It's a fantastic card with HDMI input. So any of these consumer, prosumer cameras which have HDMI rather than uh, HDSDI output, like a professional camera, mm -hmm. um, they go out from HDMI into the input on a computer like our system here that is running Telestream Wirecast 8.2. 
Now, I found version 7 did not support the input at full 4K. So you do right. need to have version 8 plus. Uh, 8.2 is a free upgrade if you have version 8. So, um, so that works really, really well. So the, as Sasha mentioned, digital zoom is where it's at. So we've got a canvas that is 1080p, and then we've got a video source that is four times that. Right. All right. So I can go like this. And I can get right in tight like that, and I can I can say, hey Jeff, like let's set this up like this is a camera shot. Or if I want to oh, go I over and talk to Sasha, this is now another camera shot. So with one 4K camera, we've got all these digital zoom positions within the camera shot, and we're able to set that up in such a way that it looks like we've got multiple cameras. Or mm -hmm. even somebody in this case, I'm I'm kind of I'm using Telestream Wirecast's smooth panning feature, which is cool because that allows it to look like some is kind of moving that camera around. That's not a feature of the camera, that's a feature of Telestream Wirecast and how we can set that up. Of course, you can do cut shots and it looks more like they're individual shots. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. So this is the FDR AX100 from Sony. Enough about that, but just know this entire episode, other than the overhead and the computer screen, everything that you see from the front, that is shot on the AX100. So if you're looking at a 4K consumer, prosumer camera and you're not sure which one you want to try, uh, this is the AX, uh, AX100, so it gives you a good opportunity opportunity to see these cameras in a studio environment where we have controlled lighting, controlled sound. Of course, we're not pulling sound off the camera. We never would. Uh, those are coming off of our headsets. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. And I'm excited because uh, this camera and the one we're covering next week are the two that I've been waiting for. Oh, the AX100 and the JVC-J. Oh. Uh, is it the HM170, which is equivalent to the 200, but the 200 right. has a HDSDI as, a, as well as the HDMI output. So Yeah, so when you first showed Sasha and I the four cameras, I was like, oh, I can't wait for the last two, just because they are that next level up. And yes. if you're going to go big, this is the way to go without being big on yeah. budget. And when we're all done, when it's all said and done, and part of this being in the studio is that, a lot of the reviews that you see on YouTube and things like that, mm -hmm. they're shot in a big field. They're close-ups of ducks and, you know, things outdoors and perfect sunny days and everything else. Right. So you don't really get the sense of, well, how is this thing going to operate uh, on a tripod in a studio with controlled lighting and controlled exactly. audio? So this is your opportunity. But, of course, each one of these cameras can be removed off the tripod and used to shoot your family home movies. Maybe not so do much the JVC. Do people do that? A high-end, like, 4K camera? Oh, like, well, yeah. I just, I'm picturing, like, going would out. Would I? Would you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. All of the I first would be so three? scared. Like, I break things that are, like, $5 on the first right. try. I would be so scared of taking this off of a tripod and holding so it in my hand. So think about this. So think about this. A 4K <laughs> camera, like a red for $20,000, $30,000. Uh, Blackmagic has the $10,000, 4.6K. Uh, so... Would you rather drop a $20,000 camera or a $2,000 camera? Neither, actually. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not saying it's okay to drop. But the fact is, is that these are price point much mm -hmm. more reasonable to take off the tripod oh, and take okay. to family events and things like yeah, that. Yeah, so Sasha, you asked, like, would you actually do that? In case in point with this one, I'm thinking about kids' presentations at the schools. Oh, yeah. Like, right. how often have I been to a presentation, and maybe you as well, where you go to your, your kids, whatever, and you're stuck at the back. So you pull out your cell phone and oh, you try no, to hold right. it. Still, and no, you do the screen don't zoom. Don't do it. This is like, what's wrong with our world today. Exactly. So... The idea of this, I'm like, I'll happily take the back seat at the gym because I'm going to yes. zoom in. My, kill, my kid is still going to look amazing. And with 4K, true. with any of these 4K cameras, you put it on a tripod and just get the wide shot of the stage. And you're gold. And as long as you've got your, your um, exposure level set correctly, um, then you can actually, in post-production, in your video editor, zoom, zoom in. in on your kid yep. and move around on the shot and stuff after the fact. So you don't have to worry about missing the funny thing that happened off to the side. Exactly. Start a little side business. Zoom in on other people's kids and sell them those videos. There you go. See? Oh. You can be the camper guy. There you Until go. Until somebody goes, I didn't give you authorization to film my kid. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> they have to sign off on it. <laughs> I think right. that they do that just by allowing their children in a concert where everybody's filming things. Fair enough. Okay. There you go. But you know what's interesting about cameras? Because I, I know we do want to get to the show. Yeah. But I happened to look at our video camera the other day. Because we you have our personal one. Yeah. Our personal one. I forgot it's still tape. Oh, no way. No. Yes. Like DVs? That's awesome. Uh, is, it, is it even 1080p? It, it's, no. no. It would be like f six, 
720 by 480, those DVD yes. tapes. Yes. Yeah, it was the little DVD, and I was like, oh, this is just painful. Wow. Yeah, that's how, well, we bought it before our kids were born because, yeah. you know, like there's ten for the upgrade. <laughs> maybe you just need to upgrade your. Maybe you just need to upgrade your home camera. Um, what's nice about digital too is that you can just copy the files off. Exactly. Those tape ones That's you had perfect. to dub them in real time. I, I know. I, there's nothing Over I do. Firewire, no. Yeah, less. I can't do anything with you know videos of my kids Brutal. being born. I'm like ah. Oh yeah, we need to import those. Get them onto digital for sure. Yep. Um, by the way, I'm Robbie. It's nice to see you. Hi, Robbie. Hi. I'm Jeff. And I'm Sasha. And we've got a great show planned for you tonight. Lots, you know, as we kind of prepare for uh, our 2018 season, we're looking at a lot of ways that around here we can improve our broadcast. And that's a big part of what we do is mm -hmm. we're broadcasters. And we, and we do this on a budget. And part of the fun of Category 5 Technology TV is that we like to teach the things that we learn as we grow. Absolutely. And that's where, you know, you come in because maybe some of the things that we're doing are going to be applicable to some of the things that you would like to do. Um, so beyond our 4K cameras tonight, we are going to be looking at an audio system that, uh, for a very cheap price, crazy you're cheap, to, uh, you're going to be able to record yourself out in a field somewhere while the camera is way far away. Uh, so stick around. We're going to be looking at that in just a couple minutes' time. Um, just a reminder that our Patreon page has gone monthly, and right. I want to remind our existing patrons, if you were a patron before everything changed, uh, make sure you note the post that has to do with your, uh, your perks, because January 31st is the cutoff for those perks, so make sure you follow through with that. Uh, I have received many of your uh, emails, and it's your opportunity to get things like stickers and mm -hmm. business cards that are personally autographed by the cast and things like that. Cool things happen when you're a patron. Oh, yes. Um, cool. Speaking of, what happened this week? We had a hangout. We had our first ever uh, patron-exclusive hangout. It was good times. It was fun. And uh, I want to say thanks to Bill for showing up and taking us on a tour of the basement, a.k.a. the server farm. Yeah. Where he had a no. Raspberry Pi 3 cluster. So There was, what, eight of them? I think he had like eight Raspberry Pi 3s react and connected all together. It was pretty cool. Uh, but it, I loved his rationale, though. Why would you do that? Because I can. Yeah. Perfect. Is answer. there any other reason? Perfect yeah. answer. Very true. Now, even if you're not a patron, you can still watch the patron exclusive um, Google Hangouts. You can go to our website, category5.tv, uh, click on watch the show, category5 technology TV, and then you'll see Google Hangouts. Uh, you can also see it on Roku on our mm -hmm. category5 TV network channel, uh, and it's going to be coming to our other platforms as well. Uh, speaking of watching shows, I discovered a show called Designated Service. Survivor. Have you ever heard of that? No. You tell just me about discovered it. it. I what? just discovered it. We Isn't stumbled it like on it on YouTube. Season three or something? I think it is. Yeah. But so we're in season one because we just discovered it. Like it was a YouTube recommended trailer. That's or the very best thing when you discover a show and it's already a few seasons in. Oh then you're yeah. Like, we and we don't do binge, but this show we have done a little two binging. episode nights. Of course, that's our that's our binge. But uh, it's cool. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland, we really liked him in 24, but 24 got to the point where it was... Repetitive? It was repetitive, but it also got to the point where they were looking for ways to make it exciting, and so it became more... L less to my taste. It was kind of hokey. It I was found more. It was more violent, and it became. I never watched it. Yeah, it just it got to the point where we just didn't like it. So, yeah. um, it wasn't for us. Uh, we like more of the drama end of it and the the thriller aspect of it. So, this really brought Kiefer Sutherland back to us um, mm -hmm. in that he is the designated survivor. And if you're an American, you know what that means. You are uh, a part of parliament and they set people aside during big parliament meetings that um, should anything occur, they can take over the role of the president. Right. And so enough said, Kiefer Sutherland becomes the president of the United States and it is a thrill ride. Yeah. Oh, I love him too. Yeah. So. Uh, and I'm a political I totally junkie. recommend it. Like I, I love shows like that. Yeah. Um, my wife not so much, so it's not a show that we've watched together. She's like, ah, politics. Oh, okay. So, but oh, what that's else? good. See, the problem. See, sorry to interrupt, but the problem Dave and I have is we have like the same taste in shows, which means that when he's not home, I can't watch you any can't of the watch, shows. Uh, yes. Right. Like, yeah. oh, but that's what I like is I can watch that show when yeah. she's not home, or oh, yeah? you know, if I've got a couple nights where I'm in a hotel for work, it's like I'm binging. 
It's <laughs> awesome. Go. It's good. That's well, so that's me good and show. Kiefer. Uh, what shows have you been into? I have been, well, I'm a big Black Mirror fan. And okay. so over the break, season four just started. Season right here. four came out. I watched it all. Because I know that you like to watch Just because the Netflix releases the whole season in one day doesn't mean you have to watch it in one day. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alerts. Okay, so here's the thing about me. <laughs> is that I will, and I did this with that show, This Is Us. I just read the synopsis of all of the episodes because I wanted to know what it was about first so that okay. I knew the story. So that's the reason why I have to watch things fast. But I don't want to get too off track here before I tell you how amazing episode one of season four is of Black Mirror. I do not care if you don't watch anything else. As soon as I saw it, I, I got on our group chat and I was like, it's recommended watching for the next show. And you actually mentioned it during our Google Hangout. Yeah. And so I watched it. And it should be noted that Black Mirror, some, some episodes are not necessarily great some are a little disturbing but each one is like a mini movie exactly so ask me they stand alone you, watch you can watch you can watch episode one of season four without having seen of anything, anything else. else exactly yeah, absolutely and the general idea is it takes it takes the idea of something in the tech world some it's idea always tech stuff it's always tech stuff and it brings it to like the furthest darkest spot that that tech could go like i feel like it's Everything is how Jeff feels about robots. <laughs> there you go. Right? Have you, ever, have you ever watched the Ricky Gervais show or listened to the podcast no. and, and hear um, um, Carl Pilkington talking about his you know, ideal movies and, and the crazy thoughts that he has in his head? No. Somebody made the connection that that is Black Mirror. If you love Carl Pilkington and his crazy mind, this is, this is definitely for you, huh. even if you don't. Even if you don't. Yeah, so I'm not going to do any spoilers or anything, but I will it's say... It's like Star Trek. I will say, yes, just watch... Not, not the show, episode one of season four. Exactly, just watch that one. You will love it. It is hilarious. Just watch it. Jeff, I, shows that you've been into? Uh, Sherlock. We just, Sorry, we just finished Sherlock. <laughs> uh, okay. The, uh, I think it was season four. Sherlock with Benedict? Yes. Okay. So good. Season four, very trippy, though. Yeah. Like, uh, enough that I'm going, okay, th like, whew, this one's tough to follow. But it was good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I love analytical thinking, and so yeah. it's, it's fun watching that one. Yeah. Um, what else have we... Yeah, see, my wife does This Is Us. I just... Ugh. I never even heard of it. Oh, I've don't get into it. it. I won't. It, it's a waste of time. It's not a waste of, it's not a waste of time if you want a good cry. It, but that's what, I don't want a good cry. Exactly. There we go. Just the there we go. Every <laughs> There's her sale. If you want a good cry... <laughs> if you're like, man, I have too many Kleenexes just hanging about the house. Oh my I'd like to go through a few dozen. Well, we just oh. answered that question. <laughs> yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, that, that one and... Um, what's the other one we've been watching? Um, they just upload... Uh, Netflix just uploaded season six of uh, Last Man Standing. Last with, Man Standing. Um, oh, oh, Tim oh, Allen. oh, Tim Allen. Right. Yeah. It's been canceled. It has been canceled. So this is the final season. Okay. So it's like knowing that it's coming to an end. We're like, mm. oh. Okay. But it's it's well. Good. That's good to know that. They, so because there's a, a final season, did they get to wrap it up? Th well, that's this season oh, six. Good. Okay. Yeah. Beast, Fantastic. All right. so, Beastmaster too. Beastmaster, if you have, have you watched any of it? Uh, I, I've seen it. I'm not a fan of it because I just realized that that's just unhuman. Hmm. It's superhuman. What shows are you enjoying? <laughs> Comment below. Let us know. Let the community know. We'd love to hear from you and what you think about our selection as well. Uh, we've got to take a really quick break, everybody. Uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to be talking about the most techie gifts that made their way under our Christmas trees. Stick mm -hmm. around. Jeff Weston, yeah, man. you're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We're having a lot of fun tonight as we kind of kick off the new year. Welcome. And uh, nice to have you here. Happy New Year to you. Uh, so what techie gift did uh, you receive this year that really stands out to you? And what do you love about it? Can I say two? Uh, yes. I suppose we have time for two. Two of them. Okay. So... I received the Jabiz lamp. Oh, yes. The one that charges your phone. And cool. not only do I love it, I actually don't even know where my charger is anymore. You don't need it. I don't need Why it. Why would you need it? You got chi. But we've ha- been having people over, and mm-hmm. I've just been super, like, nonchalant, just, like, put my phone down on the lamp. Check and then this it, out. I don't even say anything. I just act like it's natural and, p- and blow people's minds. Nice. Like, you see them explode. They're oh, like, your phone what? is low? Set it down on my lamp. Do you want to burn my lamp? Nice. Cool. Anyway, love it. And I have the new Fitbit. Sweet. What's it called? Uh, Fitbit Iconic or Ionic? I- I ionic think it's ironic. ironic. Fitbit. Ironic. Ironic. I think it's ironic. I, yes. Okay, cool. It is the new Fitbit smartwatch. What's it do? What's um, different? Can you reach over here? Like, can you get over to this I camera here? Because we've got this kind of overhead. Let's see let's me? see this. Oh, yeah. You can All see right, that. So Just kind of move right here. Oh, here? Yeah. We good? Uh, yeah, there you okay, go. Okay, so. Okay, look at this. It's up upside down. And it gives me yeah. my, like, day, what I've done. So my okay. steps, my so heart rate. That's just turn your TVs on their side, guys. How many steps have you done? Nice. Now you're just showing off. What, how many so have you it's done? like touch screen and it's like smart. Does it okay. connect to your phone and everything? It connects to my phone. Does it it has Bluetooth? music. It has music. It has Bluetooth. Nice. So I use my Bluetooth um, headphones, my Jabiz oh, Bluetooth. Oh, sweet. You headphones. can put you can play music from this? Music. There's music downloaded no onto it. No way. It has a little breathing exercise, which That's is funny. Awesome. My heart rate goes up when I do my breathing exercise because I get so excited I'm doing well. Um, <laughs> It has my alarms and timers, has a couple of games, has the weather. No. Um, it's it's That's apt- sweet. it's waterproof, which I haven't tested, but I uh, uh, yeah, sure I'd be nervous. Sure I love I love Sasha that it connects Bluetooth. Yes. Didn't your old one have to like use a wire or something? Exactly. Or? This is oh, yeah. this is absolutely She thinks perfect. you can still see it. I can show oh, you. Whatever. You yeah, I know. Get out of here. I think it's sick <laughs> that you have walked that many steps. How many have you done? Everybody's uh, with their Fitbit. 1,214. I've been very, like, set, set chill today. Chill. <laughs> yes. Nice. Well, those are cool. Jeff, uh, uh, tech gifts. Tech gifts. Um, so, two, I think. Uh, first one was a dash cam for my car. Nice. With all the traveling that I do, the amount of accidents I've seen, yep. I think a dash cam is going to be great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can prove that A was my Turn fault. it around and vlog. Well... I could use it to vlog. There yes, I could. Um, but it's it's also one that's got a uh, microphone in it. So they Sweet. can hear yeah. what I'm that's doing perfect. in the car. Yeah. So uh-huh. I'm like, awesome. Uh, well, <laughs> All the farts. And- <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Well, that way if I get in an accident and they could hear that I wasn't on the phone. Right, yes. You know, it's, it's good yeah. that way. Uh, but the big gift I got was uh, new speakers for my computer. Nice. Which apparently the two of you had a hand in and no didn't bother saying squat. About. No what idea what you're talking about. What? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm opening it up and I'm going, I look at Jen, I'm like, how in the world did you get this here without me knowing? She's it's like, just the classic, Sasha it's just the classic, uh, your wife didn't want to ship it to the house Yeah, have you see it. I know. Which is a good call because Amazon sent one of my wife's um, better gifts and they just slapped a sticker on the box, the retail no! package. They did, that, they did that to Dave too. Oh yes? Yeah, they get, they shipped in, not an Amazon box, in a no. DeWalt box. Oh yeah? And he's like, well, I guess this one's for me. It's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah. It's good. I mean, that that's it. what we did with Dave's computer is it all shipped to my yeah. place. Yeah. The, so, yeah, the Westons idea. and Rickmans have a thing now where we, <laughs> we ship just ship to each other's houses. Just add our that's addresses. Right. We've all got each other's addresses that's in Amazon. Uh, I got a new battery for my laptop, which is cool, which doesn't sound like an exciting thing. But that but is it's a six cell. It's a six cell and it gives me four and a half hours of battery life nice oh, yeah nice four and a half hours so sweet. sweet so i do a lot of production from the laptop and that's kind of my computer at home now that we have a studio here my home computer if you will came to the studio so right. that's pretty cool i uh, also got a bluetooth keyboard which i love uh because it has no touchpad oh. it has no like mouse thing oh, so okay. when i'm coding like a raspberry pi or setting up an odroid or something like that i don't like to have that touchpad in the way right. and why have it uh i do everything in the linux terminal so that's mm-hmm. perfect and it connects, Beautiful. even connects to my phone and i've been typing messages through my phone because bluetooth that's cheating isn't that what it's your totally ai is cheating. It's and, I'm cheating. Like, and then i t- i message back okay smiley face <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm like i, I write that. entire sentences like that robbie is typing correct. robbie hit enter uh <laughs> gifts that you uh that you gave i gave um this sounds so hokey now that i received this but i gave dave <laughs> 
Um, the Everlast Notebook. Have you heard of this? No. So it's an app you download on your phone. You get the notebook itself. You can write notes in it, take a picture with your phone. Yeah. But all you do, there's like uh, there are little icons on the bottom of the page. Now, it's kind of like a whiteboard in that it's a completely reusable page. It just looks like a notebook. Okay. And all of the eight icons, you can link them to different places, different emails. So say I, say Dave wrote me a note and he wants me to get it at work. He would just like put a cross through the diamond one, which is my work. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, so and it's then like he write a note. Yeah. And then, yeah, handwritten better note. Better than Bluetooth. Put, puts an X on it, takes a picture of it, and it sends it to work. No. And so do you get the picture That's of what cool. he wrote or does it convert it to text? I get the picture of what he wrote. So it te- sends it as a PDF. That's cool. It's amazing. But I it, gotta see this uh, thing. Yeah. So at, at the risk of sounding why don't you just take a picture of it and send it? Why don't I just write on a <laughs> notepad and... That's what he said. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but he has learned to love it in that okay, there that's are cool. eight different destinations. So so it's just an, it's an automatic. You, you don't have, have to, to load it into the email, type in the email. Exactly. All right. Neat. And I mean, you can set like your picture album as one of the destinations. So, I mean, I told him you don't have to write anything on that sheet. You can put down a picture, cross off, take a picture of it, and it'll send it to whomever or wherever. Hmm. Right. Oh, so neat. it really worked well for the grocery list. Sweet. What, about you? what did you give? I got to see it. Uh-huh. What did I give? Uh, a couple quick things. Uh, my wife. I got her. You gave your wife? No, I gave her a uh, a neck massager that is the most sophisticated neck massager I've ever seen. It's so cool. Entirely wireless. So you charge the thing and then it's got a remote control that's a wireless remote. It's infrared. So as you're holding it, it communicates with the device and you can set it up and it has everything from vibration to heat to uh, what they call acupuncture, but it's not actually stabbing you. It uses electrolysis and I tried it and it's crazy. I never felt anything like that. It felt like somebody was pushing on my neck. That's cool. There was no movement. It was using the electrolysis to move the muscles and stuff, kind of like a Dr. Ho huh. kind of idea. But it's Very pretty cool. neat. That's cool. So probably not if you have a pacemaker. Don't use that if you have a pacemaker. Maybe not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, for everyone else, yes. Second thing, my son, who's 10 years old, is really into, he wants to learn to be a maker. And so uh, we got him a an old school style electronics kit. Like learn electronics. Okay. Learn about resistors and relays and lights. Oh, nice. LEDs and things like that. You remember the one with the springs and you put the wire and then it connects yeah. to another spring with another wire. And so he's making all these circuits this way. And but no soldering that, involved. No soldering involved. But it's teaching wow. him how to, be, how to be able to actually create these kinds of things. That's so cool. We're really excited about that. What about you? Uh, I gave my wife an Instant Pot. Yes. Instant Pot. I gave Tell myself an Instant Pot. So I, yeah. I don't understand it. I don't get it. I don't know it. I just mm-hmm. know that she said, oh, everybody's getting these Instant Pots. And I'm like, oh, okay. Sure enough, our phones are listening to us, and bloop, up on a phone it goes, hey, Instant Pot, there's a sale. <laughs> yeah. Alexa says, I have ordered you well, an Instant Pot. So I'm like, okay, well, clearly Facebook's listening. So right. I, uh, I went to Amazon, and I found uh, a good deal for an Instant Pot, and uh, she loves it. She nice. did a water test. Don't know what that means. And um, she's excited. So let me to, to just give you a little rundown about please. what an Instant Pot is. Yeah, tell us what this actually is, because he has no idea. He's just like, I bought this thing for my wife. I just I know you know plug it in and it cooks. Yeah, nice. Yeah. It's it's an electronic pressure cooker. So what, how is it different than my electronic pressure cooker? In that, it also has um, a saute feature, and it has... Really? Yeah, so you can saute things, same pot, right? It's yeah. like one pot cooking. Well, you right? were telling us before the show, you cooked creme brulee. Yeah, I made creme brulee in it. I've never pressure cooked a, pr- a creme brulee. Well, you can. Neat. Yeah. That's what is cool I about made it. soup in it last night. I made a butternut squash curry soup. Okay. And it's just really? one pot squash? to clean. And it's one pot nice. to clean. And Dave and I, our, our apartment doesn't come with a stove. We, we don't have a stove or an oven. Oh. So this doubles as both oh, a stove perfect. and an oven. Yeah. You can steam in it. You can. There is nothing you cannot do. Nice. And I am a vegetarian, as we most of us know. But I uh, have heard that when you make ribs in it, they'll fall off the bone. So I'm going to win. I pressure cook my have, ribs all the time. I'm going to win meat against Dave. I'm going to make better ribs than he's ever made. Mm. So I did look at a review uh Kind of like a consumer's report, Instapot versus frying pan versus uh, pressure cooker, um, and pretty much hands down, it's a winner. It's faster, it's mm. better. So I was like, eh, it's a good deal. Cool. So yeah, that's that's what I got. You have to check that out. It's more so I electronic than techy. I, I used to use a stovetop pressure cooker, and then I upgraded to the electric electrical one that you plug in. Yeah. And love that, and cooking it weekly at least. So 
But uh, that's it's cool. Awesome. Check it out. It's the evolution of the pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. that's right. uh, so we've got to take another really quick break. When we come back, we're going to be showing you the poor man's mic kit. So if you ever shoot video, if you want to do some interviews, if you want to walk around and shoot video without a bunch of wires leading to you, we're going to show you how you can do it for less than the price of a latte. Stick around. Oh. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash linda. Tonight on Category 5 Technology TV, we're going to show you the poor man's wireless microphone, as far as that goes. Now, as you can see, I'm an awful distance away from the camera. A wireless microphone can cost two, three hundred dollars and you may receive some interference, a little bit of some strange anomalies in the sound, but as you can hear tonight, even though I'm probably a, a good couple hundred feet away from the camera, uh, you can hear me just fine. Completely wireless, uh, nothing uh, to be seen. And as far as wireless goes, I'm not actually using a wireless pack. But this is great for conducting interviews, uh, if you need to do something in the field, and you want to be flexible, you want to be able to move around, here's an opportunity to do that. So with a wireless pack costing in and around $200 to $300, what could this possibly cost? It sounds great. What if I told you it was $5? That's why it's the poor man's microphone pack, and I'm about to show you, as we head back into the studio, exactly how this works. You're going to be amazed at how simple this is. It's almost like a life hack, if you will, because it is just so unbelievably simple. And we see videos that promote, you know, buying a Zoom recorder and a lapel microphone and then sticking the Zoom in your pocket and things like that. As I mentioned there in the video just before the show that I recorded, um, you can buy a wireless mic pack that will connect to your camera and it's several hundred dollars. Right. And then you're susceptible to interference and everything else. Um, so a lot of times what we'll do is we'll stick a lapel on or we'll use a, a hidden microphone and stick a, a recorder in our pocket. Mm -hmm. But what is true about 2017 that was not true five years ago or 10 years ago especially? Yeah, it was 2018, right? 2018, that's right. <laughs> that's right, time travel. <laughs> what is true? What do we all have in our pocket? Do we all have a Zoom recorder? No. What do we have? Cell phone. We've got our smartphones. So, do you remember Auphonic? We had them on the show uh, just a few yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, and it was good. Yeah, so check this out. So, this, uh, this program here, well, hey, this was Walmart. Thanks, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing. Yeah, I'm on the air. I might want to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of like tell her to like quiet down over here. Uh, hey, darling. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> Mute. I hate Facebook. <laughs> when it comes to like we're live on the air and this is like that's what that's what happens. Oh, amazing. I am so glad she didn't send me some sweet nothings. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember a phonic? I do remember a phonic. How do we get off track? I don't even know. I don't know. Auphonic is uh, an audio uh, tool that we showed on the show. Yes. Check it out uh, on our past episodes. Do a quick search for Auphonic on our website. And they actually have an app. Let's bring it up on your screen so that you can see it. Look at that. Okay, it's the most simple thing. Hey, please add recordings. Sweet. Okay, so we all have a smartphone in our pocket. Mm -hmm. With the Auphonic app, which is available for free, it doubles as a recorder. Nice. And a high-end one at that. Now, if you've got the new iPhone, sorry, you're out of luck, but my Android device has 
a headphone jack combination microphone jack. Oh, that's so right. They don't know. Yeah, okay. They're co combined into the, yeah. the one jack, right? So depending on what you plug in is what it does. So let's get a quick overhead view. And for under $5, and the link is cat5.tv slash lapel. For less than $5, you can pick up this cheap little mic that, uh, turn that over that as you heard, on white. There, there you, you go. go, as you heard there in my demo, uh, it actually sounds pretty good. So this microphone simply plugs into our uh, phonic recorder, uh, which is available for your device, uh, as long as you've got this microphone input on your device, and then we simply hit record. And when we do, you can see that the levels on a phonic are starting to move as I speak. And I can hit record, and there we go, it's recording my audio. So this is a trick that we've used for years in video production, okay. which is to have a separate audio source to the video. So home, pl home users, we tend to think about the audio needs to come from the camera. Right. As per here tonight, our microphones are not at all connected to the camera. The That's camera right. is strictly video and our microphones go in through an audio processor into the same computer. So for you, if you're producing video, you use this to record your audio and then you use your video camera to record the video and then afterwards you simply sync up the audio and then you end up with what you saw there in my demonstration video. So, sounds Simple. fantastic. It's nice and close, so we can get this right on. So, in my case, I had it uh, clipped onto my shirt here with my coat over top of it, uh, which screens some of the wind noise. And again, this microphone is available for under $5. That's crazy. And I do recommend that you check out the Aphonic app. Check this out. It's nice and simple. It's still recording. And as I talk into the microphone, it's like that. And as you know from Aphonic, and I think I just lost connection. Oh, there we go. It's wirelessly connected, obviously. I don't have any wires going here. Uh, so there you go. So then I hit pause, and then I can hit save recording there, and it'll just save to my, uh, my file system, and that's what it looks like. And then in order to actually use it, I need to save to file, or in my case, what I like to do is I share, and when I share, I share it to my Google Drive. Right. And then I've got access to it from all my devices, and I can bring it up on my computer and so on, and I don't have to connect anything to my phone. Right. Um, so that's pretty brilliant. So one thing to be aware of this, though, is if you do have a large audio file before you share to your Google Drive or something, be aware sure. that you might want to be on Wi-Fi. Might want to be, but I mean, it's a wave file. It's audio only. It's not HD video coming off of that. Um, so it's not really big. So my demonstration today, including all the shenanigans, getting everything set up, was 90 megabytes. Yeah, so see, and that's not, not bad. Much. But if somebody's got, say, like a one gig plan. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to use Wi-Fi if you've got it yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Good point. Um, so check out the Aphonic app. Uh, it's called Aphonic Edit. It's available in your app store for any of your devices. Um, check it out. It's a great recorder. And it also, incidentally, connects to your Aphonic account if you've got it set up to do so. And then you can automatically process the audio just like you saw, but you'll do it from your phone. So all of the levels will get matched up. Everything will get nice and clean for you. And uh, then it will sound absolutely fantastic. In our case, I import it into my video editor mm -hmm. and then I run it through Auphonic anyways. So yep. it's fantastic. For less than the price of a latte, we just solved the problem of being able to walk 100 meters away from my camera and still pick up perfect crystal clear audio that will later be dubbed in and edited in to, uh, to match up with the video. Cool. Good times. Very Stuff. cool. Well, Sasha, we're about to head over to the newsroom. If, you, uh, if you're going to prepare yourself there, I just want to make a quick mention as she's getting that up. Uh, Dead Effect 2 VR. Jeff has it. I Sasha do. and Dave have it. It so is good. sweet. And it is a virtual reality game available in Steam. We are giving away tons of copies. We've got some for you. What we're doing is uh, as we uh, kind of got through the holiday season and into uh, January, we're collecting your ballots. And then we're going to be doing more draws to give it away for absolutely free. Uh, all you have to do is send an email to contest at category5.tv. Tell us how you're watching, where you're watching from. And when I say how you're watching, like what device or maybe you're watching it on YouTube or through our website, however you're watching the show. We'd love to know that. And, uh, and then you're going to be, uh, that's your ballot. Yeah. And we're going to be doing a draw and giving away more of that game. Very cool. cool. So over to the newsroom, Sasha Rickman. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category5.tv newsroom. The loss of an expensive Russian satellite was due to an error in the coordinates that were programmed into it at launch. Apple has apologized after facing criticism for admitting it deliberately slows down aging iPhone models. 
Google has developed a human-like text-to-speech AI, and as it turns out, the Nigerian prince is actually a 67-year-old man from Louisiana. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, you'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners, and thank you for watching. This is the Category5.tv newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. The loss of an expensive Russian satellite was due to an error in the coordinates that were programmed into it at launch. The Russian Deputy Prime Minister has said that the loss of a multi-million dollar weather satellite in November was due to programming errors. Dmitry Rigzodin said Meteor M had been programmed for a liftoff from a different launch site. And speaking to Russian state TV, he blamed human error. He told the TV channel that the rocket was programmed as if it were taking off from a launch pad nearly 2,600 kilometers away from the actual takeoff point. The rocket contained 18 smaller satellites belonging to research and commercial companies from Russia, Norway, Sweden, the U.S., Canada, Germany, and Japan. Russia's space agency Roscosmos said last month that it had lost contact with the weather satellite, which was worth 2.6 billion rubles, the equivalent of about $58 million or 43 million pounds. Wowzers! I, you know, I shouldn't laugh at something like this, but I'm thinking... If you're in charge of a multi-million dollar satellite, like, that's a big oops. You would think there would be some checklist that would go, did you check that we re the I can't help but think this was a programmer who made this mistake. We'll blame it on AI. Oh. I, you know what? I just feel a little bit better when I make mistakes now. Like, I have called... That's a big mistake. Like, what is 2,600 kilometers away from here? Just probably the next launch pad. Yeah. They just and they probably had a scroll down list and they just clicked the wrong one. Ooh. All of those. I, so here are like directions. It was a scroll down turn list. left, turn right, <laughs> turn left, go straight for ten kilometers, and but now start that from twenty six hundred kilometers away and see if you end up at Starbucks. So uh, right. it makes yeah. me wonder though, like what was it in the calculation that made it get like? Because obviously it goes up in orbit and then it's supposed to go around the orbit. So, but if it thinks it's here. And it's actually here. Right, so it went outside of the gravitational pull. Is that what happened and just kept well, going? Aren't there, like, windows that they can get through in the atmosphere? That Well, it all has to do with, like, trajectory and rotation of the Earth and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, what if it happened to go the other way, and instead of going too far out because of where it was, it goes, oh, we're here, and all of a sudden... Boom, crashes back to Earth and hits right. like right. a Right, well, that's or the something. thing. Now that it's oh, yeah. lost contact or something, it, are we at risk? Are parts of it going to come through back through the atmosphere? In uh, any I don't way? think so. My understanding no? of this one is it's gone. Oh, okay. So we don't have to worry about cleanup. No, I, I we don't think have to it's worry floating. about like nothing. It's that, good. It's just. That's my understanding gone? on this one. It's just. It's on its way somewhere it's else. Just more space debris to. That's right. <laughs> to navigate through and. The Martians will deal with it. <clears throat> I don't know. USS you take care Callister? of that one, Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah, it's becoming a bigger issue. I think that the the whole kind of like the I don't know if you've seen this, but there's an orbital um, diagram that shows the Earth and, and the, the orbit of all the junk. Yes. Not just the satellites, but the junk. That's and it looks saddens. like the rings of Saturn. This it's saddens crazy. me. We are just a kind of a disgusting species. It's, we, it's litter, yeah. we litter. We litter. Like think that. the and oceans are bad. The Earth is bad. Sure. The air is bad. And it's we're like, bad. let's take it to space. It's bad. But now shoot a rocket up into space. Shoot a satellite up into space. Or yeah. try to fly to Mars and get hit by thousands of pieces of space debris well, at, uh, traveling at tens of thousands of kilometers an hour. And bananas. that is a concern now. I mean, yeah, in the absolutely. last 15, 20 years, they've been talking about how do we clean that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, so, yeah. Cleaning up space. And they, they've said that over the past 50 years, one piece of space junk hits the atmosphere per day and presumably either burns up or makes its way down to Earth. Are we waiting for a Chinese a satellite to crash or something? 
I've been watching this in the news. I think there's like a satellite that's slowly getting close to Earth, and they're waiting for it to crash. Oh yeah. And they're concerned that it might land, hit land, depending on when it falls. Ah. That could be. Ah, that could be. That's one of those things happened. you don't think about, but is really scary. And by you don't think about, I mean. I don't think about. Yeah. I think it was really the programmer for the uh, satellite didn't. I think no, it was the early '90s where they saw a, a big portion of a space shuttle or That's something right, yeah, that came in down. the ocean or something. No, it came down in the in the desert. So. Right. Um, yes. And and then we think, you know, what are the risks involved, right? So I start thinking, okay, well, you know, a big piece of space junk falling to Earth, uh, what's going to happen if it hits a city or something? Right. And the reality of it is I found out that it, back in the 60s, it actually happened. A woman got hit by space junk. Really? Yes. See, I've heard of people getting hit by the Man. blue poo water from planes. Oh, gross. But Oh, gross. Jeff, I did not need to know that. Um, but so she got hit by space junk. Wow. And turns out she was fine. She well, was fine. A she lot was fine. Of, a lot oh, of them well, turns up. I feel up. like most of it burns Absolutely. up. Yeah, it's and it so looks like when a it huge hit her, star. it was like a like take a piece of paper and throw it at someone. Like yeah. that's that's the effect that she oh, okay. because it was a, a piece of the fuselage that was like a mesh and it fell and it was like ten, oh, ten so centimeters cool. by ten centimeters she's and just kind of drifted down in the wind or whatever and huh. tapped her on the shoulder. But it actually happened. But it wow. could be a a giant piece of an engine or something most, I suppose I feel like most of the time it would incinerate like you have to yes, be at the exact right angle plan. for re-entry don't you yeah. that's why people why it's scary when people come in don't they have to be at the right angle sure. or else they burn apart yeah yeah, yeah. but if you come in too hot when you yeah. get something like SpaceX sending up sat um, satellites and shuttles that explode or rockets that uh, explode that's an uncontrolled thing Mm -hmm. It's not planned. We didn't intend for it to explode on its way up into the into the atmosphere. That's why they sh they ship them up off of the water, right? Yeah. That makes because sense. we are pre Safety. predominantly a water based planet. So, right. Okay. Well, mm. we have to clean up our space. Uh -huh. it turns out. Apple has apologized after facing criticism for admitting that it deliberately slows down some of its aging iPhone models. The company now says it will, re it will replace batteries for less and will issue software in 2018 that will enable customers to monitor their phone's battery health. Some customers had long suspected that the company slowed down older iPhones to encourage customers to upgrade. Apple admitted to slowing down some phones with aging batteries, but said it was to prolong the life of the devices. In a statement posted on its website, the firm said it would reduce the price of an out-of-warranty battery replacement from $79 to $29 in the U.S. for anyone with an iPhone 6 or later. And in the U.K., the price will drop from $79 to £25. It said it was pushing ahead with measures to address customers' concerns, to recognize their loyalty, and to regain the trust of anyone who may have doubted Apple's intentions. The firm has had eight separate lawsuits in the U.S. filed against it over the matter and had also been facing additional legal action in Israel and France. Apple acknowledged earlier this month that it does deliberately slow down some models of the iPhone as they age and said that they made changes to the iOS operating system in order to manage aging lithium-ion batteries in some devices because the battery's performance diminishes over time. I feel like this isn't uh really I didn't see this story because how often do you go oh my phone's like a year and a half old it's pretty slow now mm -hmm. like we had iPhones that was our biggest complaint and that's why we stopped using them yeah it was because the 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 users know yeah now they got found out and they have this story to so, go along with it? Right. So they're backtracking. They're like, we're not doing this planned obsolescence thing. We're doing a battery protection thing. Sure. If you were doing a battery protection thing, you would have told us at the purchase that you were going to protect our batteries. Mm, good you point. did not do that. So I'm calling your bluff. And yeah. really, uh, really, this is not how reality works. Yeah. If I sell you something that is my product, I don't make that product worse and worse and worse because it's getting older and I want to extend its life for you. See, where I, yeah. what I'm <laughs> interested to extended. see though is are these lawsuits going to allege that uh, this is a, a ruse by Apple's part to force you to get a new phone because yours can't handle it. I, I'm sorry, but that is Apple's business model. Sure it is. That's how yeah, make Apple their own works. product obsolete so you go with the next one. Absolutely. Right. I, I feel like maybe Apple should just be really honest and be like, of course we made your old phone bad. You don't want your old phone. You want your new phone, and it's at the store, so go get it. Yeah, I, I would exactly. be interested to see now 
if somebody gets a battery replacement, puts it in an older phone, if suddenly the life is restored, and if they're going to turn around and say, I bought a new phone when I didn't need to, mm -hmm. you owe me that the price oh, for that sure. phone. But hold on, my camera, the batteries just don't last as well as they used to. So what do I do? I take out the battery and I replace it. And my camera works perfectly. Right. The iPhones Canon are did not make my phone, my camera not work anymore. Right. But see, with the iPhones, most people don't know how to replace a battery. Sure. I, I replaced Jen's battery when it slowed down. Yeah. Brought new life to it. Did it? Yeah. No. It was a pain in the butt. Sure. Because you have to completely dismantle the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, you void your warranty and all that. But it, I did it, and it was great. I mean, we got an extra year out of it. Okay. So mm. what are your thoughts? Mm. Planned obsolescence or trying to Definitely. give you longer life? Undoubted mm. planned obsolescence, in my opinion. <laughs> In a major step towards its AI first dream, Google has developed a text-to-speech artificial intelligence system that will confuse you with its human-like articulation. According to reports, the text giant's text-to-speech system called Tocotron 2 delivers an AI-generated computer speech that almost matches the voice of humans. The internet giant has announced it is shifting its focus from mobile first to AI first, and we've seen them launch several products and features in line with that goal, including Google Lens, Smart Reply for Gmail, and Google Assistant for iPhone. The new text-to-speech system first creates a spectrogram of the text, a visual representation of how the speech should sound. That image is put through Google's existing WaveNet algorithm, which uses the image and brings a cl AI closer than ever to indiscernibly mimicking human speech. The algorithm can easily learn different voices and even generates artificial breaths. Wow. That is awesome. On the basis of its audio samples, Google claimed that Tacotron 2 can detect from context the difference between the noun desert and the verb dessert. De yes. And the noun present and the verb present and alter its pronunciation accordingly. It can place emphasis on capitalized words and apply the proper inflection when asking a question rather than making a statement. Google's engineers did not reveal much information but left a big clue for developers to figure out how far they've come in, this develop in developing the system. They did this by dropping a handful of wave samples and leaving it up to developers to guess which were the real human speech and which were created by the AI. That's amazing. Now, first of all, us humans have trouble differentiating oh, between. <laughs> that's the thing. I'm like, now, now, now. Okay. Uh, do you guys want to hear? thing. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear? Sure. Uh, so uh, head over to cat5.tv slash taco. And here she is. Generative adversarial network or variational autoencoder. That is a really difficult sentence to say. Generative adversarial network of, oh, I can't even do it. Uh, variational autoencoder. Oh, way to go. He has read the whole thing. I think we'd be hard pressed to tell if that was a real person. Like, if you heard that on the phone, uh, let's try another one. This one, the buses aren't the problem, they actually provide the solution. The buses aren't the problem, they actually provide a solution. Okay, what I find funny about that one yeah. is you actually read it wrong. Sorry. <laughs> so, She's so much better than well, me in it, every way. Yeah, you said the buses aren't the problem, they actually provide the solution, and in this case, it's actually written a solution. So your brain automatically replaced a word because you're used to the solution, not a solution. Yeah, let's get the, the grammar right. It's, so it's funny how, how the AI how would she doesn't that? have that thought process of assuming what the text would be. Is she really good with right. UK city names? <laughs> well, okay, so that's that's what I'm thinking as you're reading this, is what, like, okay. could so it do accents? How would she handle this, though? So here's, this is really awesome. This is really awesome. Okay. Now, um, how about a tongue twister? Okay. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. How many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? So natural and so incredible. It's, it's just amazing. That's so... I like it. Yeah. So, okay, but here is the thing about it. Before you take the thing from me, I will take it. So when you answer the phone and you think you're talking to a robot, that you was my hang thing. up the phone. But right. when you think you're talking to a person, 
you don't hang up the so phone. So now we implement the AI portion of the thought processes and the machine learning and can actually communicate. Yes. That was my thing, Sasha. Sorry. You still, I'll let you have it this time, but next week, don't steal it from me. We are <laughs> this close to <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Data. Yep. I just, nice. yeah, I feel like this probably is going to be one of those situations where we can see some good and some bad. I, I still want to go back to the um, accent piece. Like, I think okay. when, when Siri first came out. Oh, it's going to happen, absolutely. Yeah, and Siri couldn't understand Irish. Right. Like, yeah. c could you use this to create accents and different, maybe, dialects? Ooh, I'm sure machine learning would say, well, let's learn already, so. from ourself. It's like the machine teaching the machine. Right. So now I'm going to listen to this speech that I have created. <gasps> but I wonder how, if they'll come up with better words for us. Maybe. Like, but you've how been cool. using this word way too often. You don't need to. So. But what I'm wondering is, how cool would it be to use this to recreate lost vocabulary? where maybe a certain dialect and, and the way that it was said, the accents, like, been lost because the civilization has disappeared. That'd my be mind, so cool. My mind is blown on English. Fair enough. Klingon would be a nice addition, but uh, let's take it one step further and bring back lost languages. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, back to you. An American fraudster has been caught in relation to the Nigerian print scam. That's right. According to police, they've nabbed a 67-year-old Louisiana man who swindled people out of thousands of dollars as a middleman in a Nigerian Prince Internet scam. Michael New of Slidell, Louisiana, about 30 miles north of New Orleans, is facing 269 counts of wire fraud and one count of money laundering. The scam involves the victim receiving an email from a Nigerian official who claims the recipient has been named a beneficiary in a will and will inherit at least one million dollars. They are asked to send personal information which is then used to con them out of their money. New has allegedly participated in hundreds of scams and has wired money to co-conspirators who do in fact live in Nigeria. The 18-month investigation remains ongoing. Slidell Police Chief Randy Fandel warned police people never to give out personal information over the phone or via email or to wire money to anyone they don't know. The chief warned if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Okay, hold on. Is this real life? This is real life. But people the guy's name... I, I know I digress. Randy Fandel... Yeah. Randall Fandel from Sidell. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's weird. <laughs> See, I, I just, when I saw this, I just kind of <laughs> chuckled to myself because I'm going, when I first created an email address back in, I think it was 1994. You get this one? I got the Nigerian mm. prince then. Mm -hmm. And he's still going around. You would think over 20 years later, people are aware the Nigerian prince is not actually going to give you money. But somehow, it happened. Oh, but there was a big a one where thing. Bill Gates was giving out money and stuff too. Oh, I sure, get I you get yeah, these. Share the this, and we'll give a penny to every share. I, to yeah. I, I honestly think the Nigerian Prince one is hilarious, but yeah. it's sad to me, very sad to me, that it actually still works. And when and people I, fall for it, people were traveling to Nigeria I, to meet with the prince. I feel like you should only fall for this if you maybe lived in Nigeria and think, oh yeah, the Nigerian prince, we go way back. <laughs> yeah. Right? See, like, I, I can't help like but wonder if this is mainly the aged who fell for it. Maybe it they're not as tense. Like there yeah. are 30-year-olds that are traveling overseas to... And then getting captured and... That's yeah. true, yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. weird. If it seems too good to be true, it is. Nobody... In, in a country you have never been to, that it, you're probably it, not their heir. You, yeah, no, yeah. sorry, other people have right to their imaginary money. Just be wise, people. What? Like, yeah. yeah. Like, you, you gotta question this stuff. You have to. <laughs> the, I mean, not to deviate from, but what I'm seeing right now going on Facebook is, ooh, you get a Tim's card. Share this. Sure. And you get no, sorry, that's just mining all your data. Yeah. yeah. Don't do it. It's a scam. Yeah. Uh, be aware, people. Now, that said, if you are a Nigerian prince, my address is on the bottom of the website. <laughs> uh, I'd be fine with you sending a boatload of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. 
Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. Thank you, Sasha. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You've been watching episode number 537. It's been nice having you here. Happy New Year to you. Um, have either of you two ever heard of Linspire? Linspire? I just looked at my disc the other day. I don't you know did? What it is. You did? Yes. You still have it? I Please. still have my Linspire disc. Nice. Could you bring it in? Yeah, I wish you had told me before the show. I oh, it's, bring it, bring yeah. it next week, okay? Yeah. I also Big have uh, my Lindos disc. Lindos, the original? I got Lindos and Linspire. This guy is the king. I found a floppy disk. Wow. 1.44 megabytes. Have you ever heard of Linspire or its predecessor, Lindos? Yeah. This was an OS way back in the day. and It was back when we were doing Cat5 in your basement. That's right. Um, and it was... Uh, a Linux OS geared specifically to the desktop. So good. It's what got me into Linux. And me too. Yeah. It was my first 100% transition to Linux. Now, I had dabbled with uh, Caldera and Red Hat and yeah. a few others um, leading up to my, my uh, moving over to Lindos at that time. Uh, but Lindos let me move completely 100% over to Linux. So it has a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. But the company fell apart. It was sold off to Xandros. Xandros was shut down by Corel. And it's just a big mess. And then the patents and the trademarks and everything came up for renewal yep. and nobody renewed them. And guess what? Somebody bought them. And Linspire, lo and behold, is coming back from the grave. They got yes. the source code and they have updated it and version 7 of Linspire. And a follow-up of FreeSpire, the free version of Linspire, is also uh, scheduled to awesome. be released. And I believe it's actually coming out this weekend. Very so cool. next week on the show, we're going to be taking a an exclusive look at Linspire 7, the new release just uh, actually sent to, I, I think we have the first copy that has ever been sent out. Uh, it's not available on the web yet. There was a trial that was available a couple, uh, cool. a couple of weeks ago. but uh, So we're going to take a look at that on next week's show. Make sure you check it out. If, you're any, if you have any interest in Linux or alternative OSs, this is an exciting time, and we're excited to see what's, uh, what's going to be happening. And in addition to that, we're going to be speaking with the developer as well. So you want to stick around, uh, make sure you're here uh, next week, and we look forward to, uh, to sharing the, the exciting news of Linspire. I'm giddy! Mm. <laughs> Bring those discs, okay? Uh, I will. Happy New Year's. Take care, everybody. That's all the time that we have for tonight, and we'll see you next week. I said tonight. I'm not supposed to say tonight. We have to go back and redo the whole show. Oh, oh. darn it. Okay.